Hi, welcome back to the session as part of your desire program in uh, corporate finance and investment banking. In our last session, you looked at what a real company's income statement looked like. You actually looked at a Domino's pizza income statement and you learned what the different line items in those things, some were fairly complicated line items. We saw how those things were different from the simple income statement that we built before. And we ended that session by going through, finding out where we could actually find these income statements online, the company's website, the uh, Yahoo Finance and, and all of that. We, we unfortunately, we didn't have time to finish up the, the actual goals of that session, which were uh, essentially accruals and revenue recognition uh, and some special cases in terms of cost of goods sold uh, for a company and also looking at some financial ratios in order to make decisions in a company. We are going to get going and try our best to finish up these goals in this session. Now, uh, you know, as long as you, you, you are having like, let's say your personal income statement that looks like this, or maybe you run a really small private limited company uh, whose income statement probably looks like this, it is really fine how you make your entries as long as you're comfortable with it uh, and you know whoever who are, the other stakeholders are comfortable with it. But once you become a public limited company, which essentially means every time I say a public limited company, an IPO, I mean a company that is listed on the stock exchange, the National Stock Exchange or the Bombay Stock Exchange or the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. And there are you know thousands of shareholders who have bought your stock. So, so the, the minute you're listed on a stock exchange, there's a whole lot of regulations and laws and all of that that you have to follow as a company that you didn't have to while you were running this company uh, as a private company. And one of the first differences, one of the first and the most critical differences is how you recognize revenue or how you recognize expenses. Uh, now let's just, you know, uh, let's take an example, like for example, let us say uh, let's say you, for the purpose of this session, we're going to use an example of not a pizza company, but let's say a, a small IT services company, yeah? a small or a big IT services company, basically a company, uh, something like Infosys or Cognizant or TCS, where the company is just making some software for a client, uh, you know, some adults in India or, or abroad. So let's say it is the month of... Uh, June 2011, all right, June 2011, and then let's say July 2011, and August 2011. Again, there is, there is a reason that I'm building this whole thing out in front of you as against like, you know, showing you something that's already built. Uh, because this way you'll actually know how to build these things in Excel, which is very important. You get comfortable with this. So three months, June, July, um, and August 2011. So, and we're going to make this as simplistic as possible. Uh, so what I'm actually doing here is building out a very mini income statement. We're making it very simple so that you just understand this one concept we're, we're going to look at right now. Basic revenue expenses profit or loss yeah you're familiar with this whole um, logic right now so there you go let's format this so it looks a little pretty um, okay now in Let's say in, in June of 2011, you're an IT company, so there is this one client who comes to you and says, um, hey, here is 5 lakhs, okay, here is 5 lakhs in cash or check or whatever, can you build this uh, website for me, this e-commerce website for me, it's going to cost 5 lakhs, here is 5 lakhs. Uh, you know, three. It's gonna maybe take you three months to build this website. So here is the money. So what essentially happens here is you're getting an advance payment. Yeah, is that right? You're getting an advance payment 
in, two, in June 2011, whereas in August 2011, you will have to deliver the product. You will have to deliver the product. All right. So now, what is going to happen? You're going to take this file axe, you're going to say, uh, you know, pick five of your best developers and say, let's get cracking on this website. And let's say roughly every month, you know, your, your, your expense for, the, you probably have other projects going on, this income statement is just for that project. And let's say monthly you're spending 50,000 rupees on this project to execute this project, okay? So what is happening here? In June 2011, your client has given you 5 lakhs. He expects delivery of your product in August 2011. And is he going to give you any more cash in between? No. I mean, we have assumed that the cost of this pr product is 5 lakhs. And that's it. When you give him the product at the end of th 3 months, he's not going to give you any more money. So let's look at what is happening in the profit or loss part here. First month, 5 lakhs came in and you spent. Oh, sorry. I, I, I said 5 lakhs that again. Uh, I said 3 lakhs that again. Let's just say, okay, yeah, 3 lakhs is fine. Okay, so 5 lakhs minus 3 lakhs, which is 2 lakhs in profit. July 2011, all of a sudden what's happening is uh, you, according to the statement, you have made a negative, you've made a loss of 3 lakhs and again another loss of 3 lakhs. And, and the reason that is happening is obviously obvious here, which is uh, that there is no income coming in, you have expenses going out, which is why you're making this loss. Now, this method of maintaining your accounts or income statement is what is popularly called cash accounting. This is called cash accounting, this method of maintaining your accounts, where every time cash comes into your company, you make a note of it. And every time cash leaves your company, you make a note of it, and your profit or loss is based on how much cash is coming into your company uh, or how much cash is leaving your company. Now, this is wrong. Wrong as in it is right, but if you're a public company, if you want to follow uh, regulations and the Domino's income statement, every company out there maintains their accounts using a different method. And the reason they don't do this is because now somebody looking at this income statement will get a feeling. Now this is weird. This is this is an extremely unpredictable company because in one month they're suddenly making a profit of two la three lakhs. In another month they're suddenly making a loss of three lakhs. Maybe another loss of three lakhs. And maybe who knows what's going to happen in the fourth month? Maybe they're going to make another profit. So I have no way how to analyze the company. And you see the trouble with that because this is not an accurate representation of what's happening in the company because even though you got cash in in June two thousand eleven. You don't re that money is not yours until you deliver the product here in in August 2011. Okay, so this income statement does not it, it accurately rep represents the cash going in and out of the company. For that, we have a separate statement called the cash flow statement. But since an income statement is supposed to represent the operations of a company every month, this one does not do it because in in two, in July 2011 you're spending. 3 lakhs in expenses, but there's no revenue. So what is the money going towards? Clearly, it's going towards this project where the customer has paid you 5 lakhs in advance. So it is only right that we re realize this revenue slowly going forward based on how much work we are doing for that project going forward. Yeah, And that method of revenue recognition is what is popularly called accrual accounting. Yeah, it's called accrual accounting. And uh, we're just going to copy this straight across here. So it's, you know what, let me just, yeah, okay, let me just copy this here. So it's easy to, for us to do this. This is called accrual accounting. And how, how accru and, and the difference and how accrual works is, even though you got 5 lakhs in revenue there, accrual accounting, accountants will figure out, so how long is this going to, take to do this project. They're going to say three months. Okay, so we are going to divide this 5 lakhs by 3, which is 1,66,667, and realize the, this entire revenue over a three-month period when the product is going to be built. So just so that we are clear on that again, even though cash has come into your company before, your bank balance probably goes up by 5 lakhs, but on your income statement, you still realize 
only that portion of the 5 lakhs for which work has been completed that month. So if 3 lakhs was spent and expense that month to complete the project, only the revenue that is probably generated by the 3 lakhs is recognized that month. So that, you know, the whole, the whole, um, the whole uh, income statement more accurate, accurately represents the operations of the company. So here every month you say, okay, there is 3 lakhs of expenses this month. What has that money gone towards? It has gone towards making this 1 lakh 66,667 in uh, uh, revenue. Yeah. So that is the difference between cash accounting and accrued accounting. Now, similarly, uh, just as we uh, saw this in uh, with uh, revenue, there is a similar situation with expenses. Okay, in cash accounting. So, so let's say, uh, for example, you let's take these all out, and let's say you you actually outsourced one part of this e-commerce product to some other third-party vendor to develop it, you actually paid that third-party vendor maybe uh, one lakh in advance payment so that you will get a delivery of that payment in three months. So in the previous case, you got an advance, that is in terms of revenue. In this case, you're actually making an advance. So it's an expense, you know, cash is leaving, leaving your uh, account statement. So even though you paid your expenses here, uh, you have no expense here and you have no expense here. You don't get the delivery of the product until the third month right here. And, you know, just for the sake of, you know, easiness, we are not going to assume any revenue out of it yet. Okay. So, uh, yet. So what we are going to do is we're going to see how the same thing is captured when it comes to accrual accounting. In accrual accounting, what you would do is even though one lakh was given out in cash in the first month, you will not record the whole one lakh as an expense in that month. You will actually divide one lakh by three uh, and you will record that as, you know, 33,000 uh, and roughly uh, expense equated every month. And not always is this done equally. It really depends on how much of that work is for that product is being done that month. And the reason this is done, you know, the reason cash accounting is not done, accrual accounting is done, once again, is because when you look at an income statement, you want to know what expense in a company correlates with what revenue in a company, uh, and which is why accrual accounting is done. Uh, this is a really important, uh, you know, factor in an income statement when you read an income statement. Now, there is also a special case, though a minor one, in cost of goods sold. Once again, we're going to, uh, you know, cost of goods sold. I'm sure you remember this whole number here. Now, in case of a, a business like Domino's Pizza, your cost of goods sold is fairly straightforward. It is essentially the ingredients you use in the um, making the pizza and maybe some labor costs of the chefs who are actually making the pizza, right? It's fairly straightforward. But let's say in the case of an IT services company like this one right here, there's an IT services company, your cost of goods sold is not that straightforward. You know, think about it. Why? Take Infosys, for example. What is Infosys' cost of goods sold? What is Infosys' product? Their product is a software, an IT software, an application, a web app, or any of those things. And what are the ingredients to make a software? There are all these, you know, programmers and project managers and team leads who are working 20 hours a day, seven days a week, getting the project deadline. Then there's all this computer and electricity and hardware they use. But are those really ingredients difficult to say because you use the same same computer for the next product project as well, and it goes on, so on and so forth. So you, you're beginning to see there is a slight difference in what an Infosys's cost of goods sold include and a Domino's Pizza's cost of goods sold include. For Infosys, bulk of their cost of goods sold is the salary that they're paying their engineers, their programmers, the system analysts, their team leads and all that. Bulk of their cost of goods sold is that because they are the ingredients that are actually sitting down and programming and that is what is bringing out the product. 
where whereas things like hardware costs are maybe they, they maybe maybe they, they say okay 10 percentage of this computer's cost or 10 percentage of the electricity goes towards cost of goods sold and the remaining goes to the next project and, and so on and so forth but when you come to dominoes you see the, the biggest component of the cost of goods sold is actually the ingredients, the raw materials that go into the pizza and employee salary is actually a minor element, right? The chef making the uh, pizza and uh, you know the guy who actually came up with the recipe of new products, that is a very minor part of cost of goods sold in Domino's, whereas in Infosys that is a huge part of the cost of goods sold. And this differentiation is very important to understand and this understanding coupled with our previous example where we looked at Amazon's, uh, you know, Amazon and uh, Google where we tried to understand why is one company's uh, cost of goods sold uh, so different from another company's cost of goods sold. You probably remember that example. So coupled with those two examples, this helps you better understand uh, and better analyze an income statement. There is this slide. You remember this whole example where we spoke about why is Amazon's gross margin only 24% and Google's is 65%. And these are some of the differences why that happens. So um, now you've actually understood uh, a very important uh, special case and income statement, which is accrual accounting. Uh, you've also understood uh, uh, the whole uh, accruing uh, the whole concept of how expense is done using accrual accounting and how revenue is done using accrual accounting. You also understood the difference, uh, different kinds of cost of goods sold possible in a company. Now, um, the uh, you know the one other thing that we need to go over to finish up and close up this topic of income statement is the whole concept of financial analysis, the financial ratios uh, in an income statement, and that was supposed to be one of the initial goals for the session. I know, but we're going to dedicate a special session just for that because it's really important, and we're going to um, finish it up. All right. Thank you very much. I will see you soon in the next session.